After this past year, it feels good to be on the road to recovery. Campus still looks different, and we know the job market especially looks different for students at Renton Technical College. Change and challenges have been a constant for all of us, yet despite ongoing challenges, students at RTC are focused on their future and what it takes to be successful in an ever-changing economy. Which leads us to today's big question. What can we do to help equip our students for success? Let's find out. Welcome to the 2021 Student Success Week virtual gathering at Renton Technical College. As the title of this event suggests, we're talking about success, the kind of success where every student reaches their full potential and career goals. During our time together, you'll meet two students who have volunteered to share their story, goals, and dreams. You'll get the big picture about our economic recovery from Emily Parkhurst from the Puget Sound Business Journal, and you'll also get to know the incredible people who make it their personal and professional mission to help students get on the right path toward success. It's our hope that by the end of this gathering, having met the students, heard their stories, and walked in their shoes, you'll become a supporter of the Renton Technical College Foundation. When you reflect on your own success journey and consider all the people who gave you the opportunities along the way, today's an opportunity to be a part of the student success stories yet to be written. As I reflect on the past year, there has been heartbreak, triumphs, disappointments, and new opportunities for growth. My inspiration has come from the resiliency and determination of our students and seeing how our faculty and staff took on the challenge of a pandemic to above all serve our students, no matter what. We've continued to meet students where they are and move them forward to greater opportunities, illustrated by our completion rate of over 60% and our job placement rate of 82%. Equity is at the core of our mission and we are proud to serve a diverse population of students and work to remove institutional barriers to success. Even during the pandemic, we have kept our commitment to hands-on training in a safe setting in our labs, while the remainder of courses move to online instruction and creative simulation. We've also partnered with businesses, foundations, generous donors, and have leveraged federal funding to provide computers, hotspots, and other devices to ensure all students have access to programs and services. We prepare students for a changing workforce with programs such as Mechatronics, which integrates robotics, mechanical and electrical machinery, as well as programmable logic controllers used in a variety of industries. Our registered nurse and other short and long-term healthcare programs ensure RTC helps meet growing healthcare needs while providing students opportunities and high demand, high wage careers. Partners include Swedish Medical Center, Valley Medical Center, and Kaiser Permanente. RTC is consistently ranked as one of the top two-year colleges in the country. In addition to certificate and associate degrees and career training programs, RTC offers extensive English language acquisition and basic skills programs, Bachelor of Applied Science degrees in network architecture and application development, transferable credits and degrees, and running start. A number of graduates transfer to universities, including two recent graduates who went on to study at Harvard and Columbia. As we look to a more hopeful and healthier 2021, we are in a stronger position in large part because of you and the many industry and business partners who provide critical support for RTC students. You were there for us when the world went topsy-turvy, and you are with us today for yet another virtual gathering. Student success would not happen without the many corporate sponsors who make lasting investments through scholarships and grants. Many, many thanks to our platinum sponsors, the Associated Builders and Contractors of Western Washington, Amazon, the Boeing Company, Giza Credit Union, the Urban Renaissance Group, at the gold sponsor level, IAM District 751, Kaiser Permanente, 
Republic Services, and the RTC Associated Student Government. At the silver level, Internet Essentials Comcast, Marty McCarthy, Susan Palmer, and Puget Sound Energy. At the community partner level, Central Welding Supply, Consolidated Press, Follette, LSAW, the Land Surveying Foundation, and Frida Takamura and the valuable partners listed on your screen. This year, we want to recognize a company who has stepped up in exceptional ways to support students over the past year. When Rent and Concrete Recyclers President Jim Burnett came to the RTC Foundation, he said that the company wanted to partner, no strings attached, and get support directly into the hands of students. Rent and Concrete Recyclers led the way with substantial funds to purchase laptops when campus closed last spring and to provide scholarships and grants for books, tools, and classroom equipment as students scrambled with sudden job losses and added financial hardships. Jim was not able to be here today, and on behalf of the RTC Foundation Board of Directors, we are delighted to recognize Rent and Concrete Recyclers as the first recipient of the Corporate Generosity Spotlight Award. On behalf of Renton Technical College and the College Foundation, I want to give my sincere gratitude to Renton Concrete Recyclers for the generous support they have given to students throughout this year. As you just heard, student success and equity are at the forefront of the hearts and minds of the people working at Renton Tech. The incredible stories that come from this place every day are a testament of their commitment to ensuring every student finds their path forward to a successful future. We want to introduce you to two amazing students that represent the work being done here at Renton Tech and how your financial contributions make it all possible. I'm Kai, I'm doing the machine technologies program here at RTC and I'm currently working on the CNC machines here. And I want to graduate, get my degree, so I can get straight into working at maybe like a partner of Boeing or any, any type of manufacturing. I love technology. I love the things that you can do with a computer. And I felt like at that time that the pandemic was going on or what COVID hit, uh, a lot of people were out of jobs and the ones that stayed in a job were the people that work in the technology industry. I was in Renton School District my whole life, just doing what any other kid would do, you know, go to take these AP credits, do all the studying for this SAT test. In high school, they kind of teach you that this is the only way to go. You have to go to university, you have to do this, you have to get this on the AP test to go there. Right now, anything that is related to advanced manufacturing is a really good career choice. Uh, the machining uh, industry was one of the industries that were still considered uh, vital and essential. So even during the lockdown, uh, we had students who would still be able to participate in the classes and students were still being hired because regardless of what's happening, things need to be made. My parents have always like supported me and do whatever I want as long as it's like productive. Machining, like it, it's not really, it's not just free. You can't just show up right on a book or whatever, but you have to have these tools, cut like a toolbox full of pieces, hammers, and measuring instruments, all this stuff. A lot of times you just gotta go hardware store, pick up this, pick up that. The scholarship helps a lot on top of it. So we have a lot of uh, partners, several that I can think of offhead is Rotland Manufacturing, uh, Boeing is big, and also the Gene Haas Foundation has donated several times to the uh, scholarship for the machining program. The investments that our partners are making into the program and to, into our students is tremendous. What they're doing is they're developing the next generation of talent. They're sustaining the pipelines and making sure that we have a robust workforce in our region that is trained and are fully funded for the resources that they need to be successful machinists. If they see a kid has a plan and they're gonna like, they're determined to do it, they'll support you no matter what. Uh, uh, when I came here in 2005, I was fleeing from, from domestic violence. Uh, when I came here, I was pregnant and I came here just like looking for more opportunities, more for my child than for me. So I had a lot of dreams and I knew I had to work hard. I left everybody behind. I live very close to RTC, so I always had like 
some curiosity and I always thought I need to enroll one day I'm gonna study there but I always thought I don't have the money to do it I have to work for my child and then when I finally got a job I felt like I had to work a lot I worked long hours at a restaurant for a few years with an unstable income and my job wasn't stable as well as I wasn't expecting like COVID would be like the fastest way for me to go to college. I didn't have money, I didn't have any savings, I didn't have a job. I think I got an email uh, talking about this scholarship. So I thought it would be a good idea for me to apply. Karen as a student was a self-advocating young woman who um, really, really wanted to succeed. I wrote her a letter to the RTC Foundation for my mother's scholarship, and other faculty did the same. She couldn't do her work without that scholarship to buy a laptop that was powerful enough for her to be able to do the computer science coding work that she needed to do. That encouraged me more to just keep pursuing my goals. These are the type of people that are hungry for knowledge and hungry to be excellent in their program. And I think that RTC does a great job with our values in supporting them. Because when we empower students to speak for themselves and to use the skills that they have to better their lives, we're doing something phenomenal. Not for them, but with them. This type of help is important because it helps students to in school. Aunque no tengan trabajo, ayuda a pagar por costos de educación y también por libros, materiales o cualquier cosa que los estudiantes necesiten. Uh, so yo los motivo a que sigan donando. Our students need you, our programs need you. And the other thing I will say is keep getting involved, you know, uh, up your involve, uh, involvement level. So if you, if you only participate 10%, you know, you want to see 110%. So, you know, just get involved and thank you so much for your contributions. I want to be an example for my kids that uh, they are capable to do anything with the mindset they will be able to do anything. Thank you so much Karen and Kai for your empowering stories and for being willing to share them with us today. Here to tell us more about how you can support students like Karen and Kai and how to give are Fernando Del Valle, RTC Foundation Vice President, and Carrie Shaw, Foundation Executive Director. Thank you, Kenan. I've been reflecting on what this campus community means to me and the students whose lives I've seen change over the past 15 years as a member of the MART Advisory Committee and the RTC Foundation. I have to share with you one of the most favorite and moving experiences was attending my first RTC commencement. I saw parents and their adult children receive diplomas together, mothers holding their babies and grandparents realizing a lifelong dream to graduate from high school. Every ethnicity, first generation college graduates and immigrants making the American dream their own. What struck me was the joy expressed in full measure not only by the graduates but also their families and the faculty and staff. That's when I knew my wife Kathy and I were all in. We have made long-term financial commitments to make an impact on the lives of students through the RTC Foundation. So when I say time to get your wallets and credit cards out, I have and I'm doing that myself. Carrie? Thank you, Fernando. I'm pleased to share that because of our wonderful sponsors, every dollar you give goes directly to students like Karen and Kai to help remove barriers on their pathway to success. There is a link in the chat for you to make a secure donation online, or you can go to the Foundation website at foundation.rtc.edu. If you prefer the traditional mode of mailing a check, that's great too. And the foundation address is also listed in the chat and on the website. It's great to see so many of you today and a special welcome to our first time guests. We've truly missed gathering together. And to our longtime supporters, I want to thank you for being ever present through your faithful giving. I have been personally inspired and encouraged by you and all the many ways you have stepped up during this crisis with generosity and grace. 
Your gifts have mattered the most to our students with added emergency assistance and new scholarships. Thank you again for giving today. Back to you, Kenan. So why are we doing this? Why is today all about our students and helping them get on a path to success? Well, it's simple. With a rapidly changing and evolving economy, we need to prepare and equip our students for a future where they can be competitive. Here to help inspire all of us and to talk about the role that technical colleges like Renton Tech play in the future of our economy is publisher of the Puget Sound Business Journal, Emily Parkhurst. Hello, thank you so much. I am absolutely thrilled to be here today for this great event. When they asked me to speak today, it was an easy answer. You know, community and technical colleges are really near and dear to my heart. Um, my, my father actually is a graduate of a, a community college back east, and I spent years as a professor at several community colleges back east where I'm from. I taught English, communications, and journalism. Um, and many of the experiences I had working with the students there have really stuck with me today. Uh, I specifically recall a man in his early 50s who was in my English 101 class and he'd been laid off by the manufacturer where he'd worked since he was 16 and he was looking to get a degree in automotive tech. Um, my class was his first college class and he came to me after the first session to tell me just how terrible he was at writing. Um, it's just not something I could do, he told me, and I encouraged him to give it a shot anyway. You might surprise yourself. And well, just a few weeks later, he turned in his first essay, his first college essay, it was a personal essay, and truly, it blew me away. Uh, he was a natural storyteller, he was a great writer, and when I told him that, he almost fell over in shock. <laughs> but by the end of the semester, he actually decided to change his major, ended up getting a four-year degree and a teaching certificate, and he now teaches high school English. And for me, that experience has always put into just stark relief the vital role community and technical colleges play in our community. They are places where people, regardless of their backgrounds, um, can discover their gifts their skills they didn't know that they had, and learn how to apply them to great jobs that offer opportunities they might not have even realized were possible. And right now, that has never been more important. As we emerge from the pandemic and the related recession, the economy in the Puget Sound region is poised to boom. Last week, economist Chris Mefford adjusted his prediction that it would take two years for the region to emerge economically from the pandemic. Now he says July is when we're gonna to start to turn the corner. Um, on the east side in particular, things are heating up fast. East side unemployment and it's almost back to pre-pandemic rates. And while it still may take a, a bit more time, perhaps a year or two, the growth we've experienced over the past decade is going to come roaring back in a big way. That's gonna be driven by our incredible tech companies, yes, of course but also by the innovative companies in manufacturing, in shipping and logistics, in retail, and in healthcare. This is truly a diverse economy, and that's why economists say we're gonna bounce back faster here than in other regions. The only thing that could really get in our way is a lack of employees to fill all the open jobs um, that are about to flood the market. The unemployment rate is dropping fast, faster here than in most places. And the executives that I talk to on a regular basis tell me they are bracing for a huge hiring crunch starting around July. Many people stayed in jobs that they maybe weren't in love with during the pandemic uh, because switching was just too hard, so not anymore. Economists and search firms are expecting job movement to increase dramatically with some calling it a turnover tsunami that's coming. At the same time, New jobs are opening up in exciting fields like public health research, artificial intelligence, real estate, aerospace, and logistics. The students in our community and technical colleges will be vital to our region's ability to keep up with all of those open positions. You know, I looked before today, Amazon currently has 12,980 jobs posted in the greater Seattle area alone. Microsoft has more than 3,000 right now. Meanwhile, companies like Blue Origin and SpaceX are looking to build space vehicles and rockets here, something Renton Technical College's graduates could very well help send to Mars. Um, graduates of these programs could find opportunities in the incredible biotechnology companies that we have in this region. Juno Therapeutics' success and their $9 billion sale to Celgene 
wouldn't have been possible without thousands of researchers, medical technicians, and nurses here in Seattle whose work may eventually provide a cure for cancer. I've also spoken to restaurateurs and hotel owners, all of whom are preparing for a boom in demand as people gain confidence about going out to eat and traveling. They're already desperate for chefs and cooks, restaurant and hotel managers. Now is a really good time to be entering those industries. But as we've seen before the pandemic, the exciting growth that our region has experienced does not come without its challenges. Homelessness has spiked during the pandemic, and while the problem is more visible in downtown Seattle, it certainly stretches through the entire region. This humanitarian crisis demands creative solutions and coordination across communities. Anyone tackling these, this challenge will really need to bring fresh ideas, technological solutions, and a willingness to make bold changes with the humility to admit when things just don't work. It will be our young people coming at this issue without the burden of years of running up against bureaucracy who will bring forth the best solutions for our region. The next great idea is not gonna come from City Hall or from the legislature. It's going to come from somebody watching today. Additionally, this region really needs infrastructure to keep up with this incredible pace of growth. Amazon is adding 25,000 jobs in Bellevue in the next year or so, and we think that's a conservative estimate. And there's approximately $10 billion worth of construction underway in downtown Bellevue alone right now. So if you think traffic is bad now, it will be much worse in a few years if we don't stay ahead of it. Public transit expansion is vital. We can only do so much. This region must embrace a future with a wide variety of transit options to be, and be prepared to embrace new technology like self-driving vehicles. In fact, this region needs to lead in the development and implementation of new transportation options. We are surrounded by innovative companies whose technology has and will continue to change the world. That change needs to start here in our backyards and the graduates of our local colleges will be the ones on the front lines making those changes happen. We also need to add housing. The farther out that people live, have to live, the worse the traffic's going to be. In the past decade, uh, housing prices have risen nearly 60% in our region, three times faster than the national growth rate. That's driving many, including people who work, whose work is absolutely vital to our community, like teachers, firefighters, police officers. It's sending them hours away from where they work. That means slower response times for emergencies and more challenges for schools trying to recruit top teachers. If we do nothing, it will be only about 15 years before anyone making the median income uh, will be able to afford to live anywhere in King County. Won't be able to afford it. But we are doing something. Microsoft and Amazon have both contributed to affordable housing initiatives, and this region added new homes at twice the national rate over the last decade, an increase of about 12%. However, the median home value has jumped 58% in that same period, far outpacing the rise in median income and pricing many out of the market. Not only does that hurt the fabric of our society, it also exacerbates the equity issues that were laid bare by the pandemic. As our economy rebounds, we need to recalibrate and make sure that this rising tide really does lift all boats this time. That means demanding businesses and civic leaders go beyond lip service when it comes to the inequities that are embedded in our systems. For instance, the annual number of small business administration loans issued to black owned businesses has decreased 84% since 2008, despite an 82% increase in issuance of commercial loans. Access to capital for black owned businesses has worsened even as our economy has boomed. And the pandemic hit those same businesses harder. Approximately 41% of black businesses ceased operations in April of 2020, compared to 17% of white owned businesses. And three quarters of the Paycheck Protection Program loans, the PPP loans that you heard about, went to businesses in majority white census tracts. Until everyone has equal access to the capital necessary to build and grow a business, our system will continue to compound the inequities we already see play out on a daily basis. This ha it has to be our young people in particular who are standing up. They're demanding change. And it's, it's our young people who will continue to make sure this issue does not fade from our collective consciousness. The equity issues we face are also connected to our education system. 
This region's community and technical colleges are preparing the next generation of workers for the exciting opportunities and the challenges ahead. Unlike the big research institutions, which struggle to adjust their curriculum to keep up with the job market's pace of change, schools like Renton Technical College can be nimble, reacting to the current and future needs of this region's employers. That flexibility will be vital to our region's success. As someone who has hired people during the pandemic, about 10 people we've hired at the Business Journal during the pandemic, finding top talent is hard. <laughs> Most of the applicants to the Business Journal's open positions were from outside this region. Traditionally, our region hasn't done a great job preparing our graduates for jobs in our top local companies. Many employees joining the ranks of our top employers are moving here from outside the region. The Seattle area had more tech jobs, job postings in the first quarter of this year than all but five other cities, driven by a surprising mix of the usual suspects and some less but equally important local firms. Amazon and Facebook, Salesforce, uh, Microsoft, as you might expect, led the pack, as well as Deloitte and Accenture. And while Amazon and Facebook might get all of the headlines, companies like Deloitte and Accenture have become powerful tech employers as well. Colleges would be wise to include them and companies like them as they examine curriculum and areas of study for their students. But they can't do that in a bubble. It means interacting with employers, of course, to better understand what skills they need most for their incoming employees, but it also means working closely with the K-12 programs that come before college. A recent study showed that 60% of community college students and 33% of four-year public college students needed remedial courses when they arrived at school. That costs approximately $6 billion a year in federal financial aid. It's clear many of our public schools are not properly preparing our students for higher education. In addition to tacking on costs for students who need these courses, it also results in higher dropout rates for, um, as students get frustrated with their lack of progress. I saw this firsthand as a professor uh, at a community college. I estimated that approximately um, 45 to 50 percent of my class, and I taught five or six classes a year, uh, failed English 101. I recall one student who had failed the class about seven times in a row. And if more than half of our students need assistance to pass a basic English class, it's clear we're not preparing them for the academic rigor necessary to be successful in college. Just 41% of Washington's 2017 high school class is projected to complete a post-secondary credential by the age 26. And for black indigenous people of color, the rate is even lower. That's tied directly to the state's high school graduation rate, which hovers around 83%. While that's an improvement over a decade ago, it's still leaving tens of thousands of Washington students behind. Those without a high school diploma will not be able to make a livable wage in, Pug in the Puget Sound region. That's just a fact. And those who do go on, do not go on to attain a um, certificate beyond high school, are also likely to remain below this region's poverty line and well below the median income, which is closing in on $100,000 a year. Meanwhile, 70% of all jobs in Washington state require some kind of post-secondary education, a figure that's even higher here in the greater Seattle area. Now, of course, this isn't a simple problem to fix, but it is vital that we fix it. The Seattle College Promise Tuition Program, which provides any Seattle public school graduate two free years of college tuition, is a great start. Supporting organizations like Renton Technical College's foundation is another great way to do that. We need more creative solutions like this to make sure all of our students have equal access to the incredible opportunities our region's employers are providing. To conclude today, before I take your questions, I just want to say it's, it's clear this region's success will depend on our ability to train and prepare the next generation of leaders for the hard, necessary, and exciting work ahead. The Puget Sound region is among the most innovative places in the world. We are lucky. We really are lucky here, but luck is not a strategy. We need the graduates of our wonderful education institutes, like Renton Technical College, to lead us into the future. I, for one, am excited to see all that the graduates of these programs will do in the years ahead. We need you, and we thank you for tack tackling these challenges head on. 
Thank you so much for having me today, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have as best I can. All right. All right, I think we're ready for questions. If you go ahead and use the hand raise tool, our team will call on you to ask your question. For just a second here, we've got technical issue to deal with, but we'll be right with you. Ready? So we have a question about the future of increasing technical literacy for students. Um, and so thank you for that question. I do think, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. The technical literacy piece is so important. Um, and I know that um, Renton Technical College has been working really hard to make sure that Everybody here has the computers necessary um, to do their classes, especially in this kind of crazy time when everything is online. I think what a lot of us have learned over this past year is that being nimble and flexible and also being really familiar with technology is going to get you ahead. Uh, certainly, whether you're a little kid trying to, uh, to, to navigate school from home or an adult trying to cram 13 Zoom meetings into your day um, in the middle of everything, having those technical skills is going to be hugely important for employers moving forward, especially as a lot of employers go to remote work um, or some semblance of remote work, some combination thereof. Um, and that's not just the big companies. A lot of smaller companies are considering options like that. And so having that technical prowess and that technical skill is going to be more important than ever. And certainly there are jobs that you can't do from home. <laughs> you know, not everybody can zoom into work. Uh, both my parents are nurses. It's real hard to be a nurse from home. But, uh, but still, that technology marches forward. And so staying on top of the latest technology in your field, in your industry, is going to be absolutely vital for success. We have a sweat question from Sean Green. Greenlee.
It's a great question. Um, I hope some of them are. You know, that's a, I don't know the exact details of what a lot of these companies are doing. I know um, getting through that first round of um, the resume round, I guess, uh, to submit your resume is tricky because it's a lot of technology that's reading those. Um, and so understanding the correct language to use is, is really important. Some, some employers are offering um, some guidance on that, but I, I think that's a great place for additional partnership in the future. Offering you know, classes, if, if say an Amazon or a Boeing were to offer just a, you know, a, a class for students in how to construct a resume um, and how to get the attention of their hiring managers, that's a perfect place for partnership. That's exactly what um, our, our community and technical colleges should be doing to partner um, with our local employers. Absolutely, I think that's a great idea. Other questions from the audience? I'm happy to take anything I can. Oh yes, and don't forget to press the raise hand button in order to do that. So somebody asked uh, in the chat, what skills do students most need? Oof, that's a big question um, and kind of an open-ended one, but let me, let me see if I can tackle that. I think, you know, it really depends on the field that you're looking to go into, because of course, everybody wants a specialist these days. Um, and, and understanding uh, the opportunities in the particular field of study that you, um, you are pursuing is important. But you know, there's also some other skills that I think are um, just as important as the specialty skills that I think we're finding some students are coming um, not as well prepared for. And they call them soft skills, but I, I, I hate that term because they're just as vital um, to, to success. And that's you know, being able to interact with people, not being afraid to pick up the phone and make a phone call. Um, I'll tell you, you know, that's something with, with some of the younger folks who have joined the Business Journal, convincing them to get off email and get off text and just make a phone call, that's still a lot of times the most effective way um, to get business done. And so some of those skills are, are really important. The ability to present, to, to stand up in front of a room of people um, and, and talk to them and be confident about it. I think that confidence is also really important. And then work with a team. You know, I spend all my days working with our team at the Business Journal and all of them, even in this weird remote world, we're working together all the time on brainstorming, we're coming up with new ideas together, you're bouncing ideas off people, and those skills I really think are just as important as the actual technical skills that you need to do the actual job. So I think it's a combination of those things, and if you can play those up, in a job interview or when you're talking to prospective employers, I think that that goes a long way. I really do. Great question. Other questions from the audience? What's on your mind today? Go ahead and raise your hand and we'll call on you. Okay, so there's a question about advice for parents about the career trades um, and RTC. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. You know, I think actually, um, so I'm from Maine originally, um, and, and we have some really fantastic uh, technical and community colleges in Maine that prepare students for, for trade jobs, and they're just great jobs. And I think that right now what we're seeing, if you look at the demographics of a lot of these positions, you look at Boeing, for example, um, large manufacturers like that, the, the generation um, that has been in those jobs, they're leaving, they're retiring. And so there's tens of thousands of open positions um, and more coming open by the day because that group is retiring. And so there's actually a a huge hole in the workforce, so there's a ton of opportunity there. And of course, we all know how supply and demand works, right? If there's not as many people, you know, for these, you know, thousands of jobs, and we need people for them, you know, 
they're going to pay well, um, and you can negotiate. And so that's those skills. You know, those are not skills as everybody here who's listening today knows. You can't just switch those on overnight. Um, those are skills that take time to develop. And so I think that there's huge opportunity. I was talking to the CEO of the Port of Seattle, and they're dealing with this same this same challenge: finding enough talent to run those big, huge cranes that are on the waterfront and to you know drive the ships. That's Great work, great careers, you know, um, great wages, and um, they're absolutely vital to the success of our, our local economy. If we don't have people who can go into those jobs, um, our economy is not going to be able to continue to grow. So, yeah, great question. Any advice for students on building their professional networks? Great question. Um, well, I have to admit, I love networking. Um, and that's always been one of my favorite things to do. It's something I have missed very much during the pandemic. Um, you know, it sounds, it sounds simple. And I, I, I don't mean to be uh, patronizing, but just get out there. Get out there and talk to people. Um, and don't be afraid. You know, it's surprised me over the years. I, uh, you know, um, in speaking to, to groups before, I'll throw things out there like, you know, get in touch with me if you want to talk about opportunities or you want um, to talk to me about making connections in a particular industry. How few people actually take me up on that? And I think if somebody offers you help with an introduction, follow up. It's amazing how many people don't actually follow up on those offers. And I think, um, I think that's huge. So follow up, be consistent, and be persistent. You know, if somebody doesn't respond to you right away, I fully admit I have 40,000 unread emails right now in my inbox. It's a disaster. So if I don't follow up immediately, I will, you know, pester me. It's OK to be persistent. It's OK to really push um, people to, to, to step up and, um, and do what they said that they're going to do. I also think, you know, um, reaching out to people who you admire or you've looked up to, people you respect in a particular industry, do some research. Find them on LinkedIn. See what connections you might have. Or if um, maybe they have a connection to Renton Technical College. Maybe they know one of your professors. You know, try and find a way in and be creative about it. Don't just wait for the game to come to you. Because it's not going to. You have to put yourself out there. You have to get out there and talk to people. Um, that's again with that soft skill that we were talking about earlier. It's so important um, to to uh, to not be afraid to just put yourself out there. Great question. Any other questions today? I wish we all were in person and we could be having these conversations together. This is great. Is social media important? Oh, that's a double-edged sword. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think it, it probably, it, I'm guessing this question has to do with is it important for your career or important for your career development. Um, certainly certain social media networks are more helpful for that than others. LinkedIn is kind of the obvious place. Um, I use LinkedIn a lot uh, in, in connecting with people and identifying um, employees for for potential jobs and as an organization we use that and I know a lot of others do um, the sort of Twitter Facebook Instagrams uh, TikToks of the world I think it kind of depends like if you're looking to go into a career journalism for example which is one that I know well having a presence um, on social media is important it's important to kind of brand yourself uh, it's also important that that presence be professional <laughs> and, uh, and that the uh, images that you're posting and the uh, comments that you're posting are appropriate. Um, keep in mind, you know, that everything you put out there on the internet is out there on the internet. <laughs> so um, prospective employers can look that up and it's not hard um, sometimes to find things. I certainly have. Um, uh, when, when people look around. So is it important? It is. Is it the most important thing? Probably not. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. 
All right. Well, that was really great. Thank you for such great questions. Thank you so much for having me here today. This was wonderful. And I wish everybody uh, the best on the rest of the day. Um, all right, we are going to announce the winners of the drawings. We're going to have the drawings now. So if, you, if we call your name, we're going to ask you to put here in the chat so we know you're here. If you're not here, we are actually, we're going to redraw again. So if we call your name as the winner for one of these drawings, then uh, just put your name here in the chat so we know that you are present. So uh, first, we are going to start with a fifth. $50 gift cards from Fred Meyer. So we're going to spin the wheel. <laughs> Bartholomew? Kamani? Kamani. Kamani. Oh, okay, Batono Kanami. Yeah. The winner is Batono Kanami. <laughs> excited, Sam. <laughs> All right. So uh, please put your name in the chat uh, that you're here. The name went by really quickly, so it's a bit hard to see. <laughs> um, so we're going to do it again. Another thirty, uh, another fifty dollar gift card from Fred Meyer. Richard Jackson. So Richard Jackson, put your put here in the chat. Another fifty dollars. Okay, we're gonna do a, another fifteen dollar family gift card, and we can just be. Yep, another fifty dollar gift card to Fred Meyer. All right, here we go. Krista Shaw. Krista Shaw. The winner is Krista Shaw. I think Krista is actually here with us today as well. Um, so I don't think she really needs to put her name in the chat. <laughs> um, okay. So $5 gift. I 
uh, okay. car wash book from Bloomberg. Okay, next we're going to announce five dollar. Oh no, it's a uh, a one. Oh, one car wash book. Car car. Oh, one car wash but is the value of seventy nine dollar for each. I actually uh, believe they're about eighty five dollars. So 85, that's a typo. Yeah. For the uh, brown bear car wash. Brown bear book. car wash and can you speak for me the drawing? Michael Gintz. Okay, the w the winner is Michael Gintz. Gintz, yeah. If you not congratulations, your Michael. Congratulations, please put on the here name in the, the chat. Yes. Yeah. All right. So we got a few more uh, Brown Bear uh, car wash coupon booklets. So we're gonna do another one of those. That, that was the first thing? Oh, it's not popping up here. Elizabeth Page, sorry, well, we weren't, it wasn't popping up on yeah. our screen, so <laughs> we got a little delayed. So Elizabeth yeah. Page won uh, the second uh, Brown Bear Car Wash booklet. Um, so we're gonna do, we have a few more of those, so let's do another one, uh, Brown Bear Car Wash booklet. $85 uh, value of coupons. There you go, there's the spinning. All right. Bonnie Nichols. All right. Two more. Two more. Okay. Brad Thomas. So, and then I think we have uh, uh, one more of one the more. Brown Bear Car Wash booklet. The winner is Jessica Gilmore. Jessica Gilmore, Gilmore. English. English. All right. Please put your name on the chat. <laughs> so next we have, um, one of our big ones, we have the day spa for your car from Brotherton Cadillac Buick in Renton, which is a $300 to $600 value. Who will be our big winner? Just wait. Ooh, See. Exciting. Okay, congratulations. We have big winner. What's the name? Jake, Jake Guth. Gustafsson. Yeah, Gustafsson. No, Gustafsson. Gustafsson. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for messing up your name. <laughs> but Jake Gustafsson. I'm, I'm very sorry about saying your name wrong. <laughs> All right, and then the last one, we have the Stay and Play in Bend, a two-night stay in Bend, Oregon, with Badlands ATV Tour for two, yeah. for two. Okay, who's okay. Alpert? Abdullah Hussein. Okay, we yeah, the last big winner is Abdullah Hussein. You have good luck with your family to stand it's a, at. It's a two night stay for two, two people. Two night stay, stay for two people. Seventeen hundred dollar value. So can, go on, go on. is that everyone? All right. So congratulations, everyone. Um, thank you for thank you. coming to this and allowing us to come here too. So thank you. Before we end this afternoon, we want to take a step back and highlight all of the amazing people that make not just today, but every day possible here at RTC. Thank you, Kenan. I'm Brenda Collins, president of the RTC Foundation Board and longtime Renton resident. 
it truly does take a community and a campus to make an event like this happen. And as we close today, I want to recognize some very important folks. First, I want to thank the RTC Foundation board members for their dedication and hard work. Karen Hansen, Fernanda Devalle, Reba Haas, Lori Inman, Brett Kamen, Shay Kim, Bartholomew Kamani, Marco Manuelo, Bonnie Nichols, Susan Palmer, June Stacy Clemens, Warren Takata, Jay Townsend, and Kim Kahn Many thanks to the RTC Board of Trustees for their leadership and faithful support. Deborah Entman, Tyler Page, Susan Palmer, Frida Takamura, and Kirby Untai. And a shout out to Carlos Camargo and his team at Creative 24, Mark Daniels and his facilities team, the RTC librarian staff who graciously opened the library space, Everson Beasley and Ken Benzel from the marketing team, and of course, Teresa Woods, who holds it all together at the foundation. Thank you. Thank you for all your hard work and dedication. That ends today's program. Thank you for coming and for giving generously to support student success at RTC. Stay well. <laughs>